Ladies and gentlemen, I am Yusril, and welcome to the Federation Starbase Blockade. This video is intended essentially as a quick guide to the mission, just to help anyone who isn't yet quite up to speed with some of the finer points of it. To reprise the basics, there are eight spawn points. From each of these, freighters will appear and attempt to get to the Starbase, where they'll drop off a cargo and then warp out. The only real complication is that each freighter will be pursued by a wolf pack of enemies, who will be doing their level best to stop the freighter by, well, blowing it up. You've got 15 minutes to get as many freighters through to the base as possible. Simple, right? Well, kinda. There is one key rule that has to be really, really emphasised on this mission. Do not get stacked up. Even though you are in a five-man team, if you are coming up on a freighter, and you see that there are two people defending it, go and find another freighter. This is because there are three freighters on the map at any given moment, either warping in, warping out, or making their trek in. So, if there are two freighters being covered by two people, that leaves you to cover the third, and it can be done. Remember that you do not have to kill the enemy in this mission to succeed. So, if there are three players on the freighter, one of you needs to go and do something else. This is absolutely key. Useful powers in this mission. Tactical team for the shield redistribution. Tractor repulsors is not essential per se, but is so useful it might as well be. Gravity well, again, if you've got a Lieutenant Commander science slot, then the ability to just pin the enemy in place is absolutely invaluable. Tractor repulses will come back to this one, as well as controlling the enemy's position and shoving them out of range of the freighter. It also does quite nicely as an improvised point defence weapon if you don't have a third tactical slot for something like fire at will or scatter volley. You can see here it's making a mess out of some Orion interceptors. Second tactical slot, by the way, I would always tend to give to Torpedo Spread 2 or Torp spread one if I've somehow got a ship with only two ents and tacticals. Why? Because it is an area of effective attack that allows you to start generating threat straight out of full impulse. Once your energy weapons have recharged, of course, you can kick in fire at will, scatter volley, and start doing things a little more conventionally. But for that initial charge into the pack, torpedo spread is superior because it's not going to be quite so hampered by a lack of power. Other abilities, if you're not overly blessed with science slots, if you can't afford a gravity well or you can't fit a gravity well, then Eject Warp Plasma is a semi-decent substitute. While it's not quite as convenient because you have to get close to the enemy and against certain enemy groups, the Borg, the Breen, the Tholians and the Orions, that is basically asking to get tracked yourself. It's still a pretty good way of miring up enemy cruisers and ensuring that they can't close the range with the freighter once you shove them away with tractor beam. Other than that, any kind of defensive cooldown that you can use on another target is handy. So, transfer shield strength, science team, engineering team, auxiliary to structural, extend shields, all the usual suspects if you're used to playing in a healing role. If you aren't, get used to it because that's basically what you are going to have to do at some stage. Remember that you have to split the team up fairly precisely. Again, we're burning away because reinforcements have arrived. You are going to find yourself having to handle every situation. You're going to need what is very much a balanced, almost soloing build, despite this ostensibly being a team scenario. Escorts have got a comparatively rough time of it because they're very damage focused and this scenario doesn't really do much about damage it requires a certain amount of improvisation you'll often find yourself forced to choose between your survival and the freighters particularly if you've used as i have here slots for tractor repulsors and gravity well and as a consequence left yourself relatively weak on shield repair abilities. So I've only got extend shields, one on this particular build, and what can you do? Not a lot, it has to be said. One type of ship you absolutely don't want to be taking into this fight, however, is anything with a turn rate of less than about eight. Even if you're in a 
fairly conventional cruiser with turn rates of 8, give or take, you're going to find yourself using evasive manoeuvres just to get yourself turned round and pointed at a new pack. Anything with a turn rate of less than 8 is really, really going to suffer from that lack of responsiveness. Bear in mind that this mission is all about firefighting. It's all about your ability to dash from flashpoint to flashpoint. Often you'll only be at a given flashpoint for a minute or so while you stabilise the situation and neutralise the enemy as much as you need to. And if evasive manoeuvres hasn't recharged, then you've somehow got to get that lumbering bear moth of a carrier or a dreadnought turned around and pointed towards the next group. And that just takes way too long to really be convenient for this mission. Light cruisers, escorts, science vessels in particular, really get to shine in this scenario. So, that's actually pretty much it. It's a relatively simple scenario. There are no real booby traps to watch out for at the moment. If they bring the Borg back, it's worth noting that they are immune, particularly the cubes are immune to tractor beam repulsors, so you'll have to distract and tank those for a bit longer than you otherwise would. The Tholians have their spherical web. Again, go and watch the video I did when they were up on Tribble. At the moment, they're not in. Norsicans are evil. You will have to be very quick off the mark because their battleships have torpedo high yield too, and they're not shy about using it. Believe you me. Other than that, the key point really has to be don't get bunched up. Really, that is it. If you can master that one point, you will do very well in this scenario. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is that. Really, that's all there is to this now. Don't get bunched up and keep your tactical teams ready. I have been Yusril, and if there is a next time, I'll see you then. Farewell.